Hello and welcome to Beach View, our podcast about different things and or stuff. Hello, welcome again. So we're continuing with our Halloween season slash spookiness. Um, each week where we're watching something spooky to get in the spirit of the holiday. Today we're discussing Over the Garden Wall. Yes, which is a 2014 animated miniseries. It's like a like fantasy adventure story pulling on a lot of like folklore and it's like Kind of a children's animation thing, so... Yeah, uh, I recommended this one because I had heard people talking about it, like, like, online. It seems to be well-regarded, and I didn't know anything about it other than that, and that it was, like, vaguely Halloween-y, so... Well, funny enough, I have seen some, like, autumn bucket lists, like, online, you know, people, like, start sharing like stuff like that when it gets to be, you know, autumn. And on a couple of them recently, I've seen, you know, watch like, um, you know, autumn themed shows and they always have over the garden wall on them. And so oh, okay. I, um, I was, I never knew what it was though. Um, and I, you know, of course never looked it up, but like, I mean, half the stuff on the like bucket list, like I've never heard of. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't know about it, but I have read the title at least before. Yeah, so we were on the same page with this. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we we've heard about it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what'd you think of it? Um, I liked it. I honestly, I really liked that the episodes were brief. I think they were like around eleven minutes yep. for each episode, and it was ten episodes long. So it kind of felt like you were watching like an, an animated movie because I watched them all at once. You know? Yeah. But I like it. I like how. Um, each episode was like, you know, a little story, but continued the whole thing. And um, I thought it was a cute little, definitely autumn themed, kind of had spookiness going on and some comedy in it too. Yeah. I mean, it takes place during Halloween, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they're dressed like that, we find <laughs> out. <laughs> right. It was fun. Um, yeah. You don't find out till later on, like, why... The little kid Greg has a teapot on his head upside down. <laughs> and, or it's, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> I should probably say what this is first, which is, uh, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Two kids, uh, find themselves lost in the woods, and it turns out they've been transported to this, like, other world called the unknown, and they go on, you know, various adventures. It's very, like, uh, folkloric, and it's, like, got a very, like, americana theme throughout it <laughs> yeah yeah and so uh my opinion of it's like i was very high on it in the beginning or like i started watching this and i'm like wow this is really great uh like i love the writing um the animation's cool the like uh ideas are really cool and there's some like really funny jokes that yeah. like, just killed me uh, when we got to them uh but by the end i felt like it didn't stick the landing yeah. Like, the, it rushed a lot of things that it really didn't need to, and it's like, I just think it would, like, at first I was like, oh, you know, this really could have used more than 11 minutes, but then I thought about it, and it's like, the 11 minutes, like, really worked in the early sections, yeah. because they were, like, well-considered 11 minutes, um, mm -hmm. but I felt like towards the end, they, like, didn't use those 11, like, minutes in the best places, and there could have been more space given to a lot of these moments that uh the payoffs for like the long-running narrative weren't strong i agree with that um toward the i guess the last few episodes i guess like i didn't mind the last episode but the couple before that were a little bit like i wasn't as engaged i guess um yeah i kind of was like losing interest a little bit um it just like you said it, it kind of didn't stick to the long-running narrative, as you just said. Uh, I mean, you know, it stuck to it, but it wasn't as um, it wasn't as good as the episodes before that. I feel like, but yeah. And then, like, I think it was episode nine, and we'll get into those episodes. But um, I think that second to last one, I was like a little confused because, like, I was like, "Oh, are they home?" Like, you know. <laughs> oh, you you didn't pick up on that. No, not at first. I think I just kind of like, as I said, I wasn't as engaged. So I kind of was like, 
I guess not paying as much attention to it. And I was like, what? And then, and then I realized like, you know, toward the end of the episode, like, oh, okay, got it. But I was confused about that at first. Oh, I was like, no, I, I knew it was a flashback the whole time. <laughs> No, I didn't realize it was a flashback. Like, I was like, did they, how do they get home? Like, what's going on here? Yeah. So <laughs> I was confused on that. But honestly, it's probably my fault that I wasn't paying as much attention. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Also, I thought um, there were parts of the overarching story that when they're like generic storylines, and like, I get that this is like a pretty archetypical adventure story, and that in a lot of ways it's kind of. Uh, pulling on sort of a generic plot lines, mm -hmm. and uh, that's kind of the point, but I don't know. There, um, Wirt's character arc, I was just like, oh, this is the most generic stuff possible, and I wasn't, wasn't happy with it. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, um, you know, it's a very creative, as you would say, work. I like the characters, yeah. some of the jokes were solid. Uh, you know, I, I'm happy I watched it overall. Yeah, same here. Yeah, it was a cute little, like, autumn, Halloween-themed, um, you know, animated series. I'd watch it. Yeah. So, uh, plot synopses, then. Yes. Okay, uh, I should have written these down, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. Episode 1, so, uh, Wirt and Greg are wandering through the woods, that's the, uh, two kids aforementioned, uh, they run into a talking bird, and uh, an older man, known as the Woodsman, um, they're kind of creeped out by him and the situation they find themselves in, but, you know, they go along with him, and the Woodsman's warning of something called the Beast, which is this, like, mythical creature, sort of, that lurks in the darkness in the woods. Uh, they end up getting attacked by a, a dog that's evil um and there's like a sequence where they end up like defeating the dog and it goes back to a normal dog um and the woodsman like is has to keep a lantern up for some reason and also he like sends them off because they destroy his workshop in dealing with the dog but they still mourn about the beast um episode two we run into the bluebird from earlier whose name is beatrice and um Greg, the younger brother, who's, like, uh, goofy and, like, you know, typical young kid, like, doesn't get what's going on, is always happy-go-lucky, <laughs> um, and Wirt, who's, like, older, like, a teenager and kind of, like, melodramatic and into, like, poetry and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, kind of a jerk. <laughs> so they run, in, um, Greg saves this bluebird from being tangled up in a bush, and, uh, the bluebird is now sworn to help them, so, uh, they end up wandering off. Uh, Beatrice wants to take them to someone called Adelaide, uh, who's apparently like a woman of the woods who can take them back home. Uh, but they, um, Wirt wants to continue going with their, what they were doing, which is going to this town they find. Uh, and this town's strange. They walk up and nobody's home at first. Um, well, there's a turkey, but. <laughs> yeah, it's a turkey. Home. Uh, and it turns out the reason nobody's home is because they're all celebrating in the barn in the center and it's kind of creepy they're all wearing like pumpkins and it's not clear if they're people in pumpkins or if they just are pumpkin people <laughs> yeah and there's a whole like weird section where they end up getting trapped and they kind of like mess things up for the town and so they get punished uh, and they think they're gonna get like you know got <laughs> but it turns out they just get sentenced to a few hours of hard labor um, they're doing that, and at the end, they're digging a hole, and they think, oh, we're gonna get killed, like, we're <laughs> digging our own graves. Mm -hmm. But as it turns out, they're just, like, digging up skeletons, because it turns out they're skeletons, and during this, uh, they come up with a plan to escape. Mm -hmm. So they do. <laughs> Episode 3, they're wandering in the woods, and uh, they end up coming across a school, which is full of animal students. <laughs> and the teacher... Um, is all upset because her boyfriend left her. Uh, also, there's a gorilla around. <laughs> um, and Wirt and Beatrice have an argument, and Greg's, like, off doing shenanigans like he usually does. Um, so, like, you know, this is kind of like a creepy school out in the middle of nowhere that they get, like, swept up in, and you think, oh, it's gonna be something sinister. Uh, the teacher's father comes home, and it's like, uh, Greg's got them singing a song, and he's like, this is nonsense, I'm shutting the school down. <laughs> um, also, the gorilla is being menacing. And uh, so they decide 
Greg decides that they're going to put on a benefit concert to fundraise for the school. Turns out it's not sinister. Um, like he had an idea for teaching animals and his he thought his school was going badly and now he's out of money. But um, they raised the money and it turns out the gorilla was actually uh, the teacher's boyfriend uh, who had gotten locked in a gorilla suit because he was <laughs> in the circus trying to raise money to buy an engagement ring. <laughs> uh, everything ends up okay in the end, and they go on their way. Episode 4. They're still wandering around, and they come a across a tavern to, um, like, get directions to Adelaide's house. Um, there's a whole sequence in the tavern, um, where eventually they warn, uh, where eventually the people in the tavern warn the brothers about the beast, um, and it's like, the beast carries a lantern. It's like, oh no, the old woodsman we saw who had that lantern is actually the beast. Mm -hmm. um, and the woodsman's also there. And Beatrice goes to, like, talk to him and gets knocked out. Uh, so, you know, they go off to, uh, like, deal with the woodsman. And it turns out at the end that uh, they escape with the bird. Um, and it turns out, no, the woodsman isn't sinister. It, you know, he's not the beast. But uh, the beast talks to the woodsman and... Uh, He's trying to get a specific type of wood from, like, a really creepy-looking tree so he can uh, light the flame, which keeps his daughter's soul alive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also the horse can talk. There's a horse that they end up taking who can talk. <laughs> yeah. It's important for episode five. Yeah. Um, episode five, they uh, come across a mansion for, like, an eccentric uh, rich man who lives alone, uh, and... They need money to go to the ferry to Adelaide's house, so they're trying to steal from him. Um, <laughs> the horse, Wirt, and Beatrice. Meanwhile, uh, Greg's just, like, talking to him. Um, Distracting him. Well, he's not doing that on purpose. He just, <laughs> uh, he, like, gets along really well with this eccentric rich man. <laughs> yeah. And the uh, rich man tells a story about how he thought he saw a ghost, uh, and he was <laughs> thinks he fell in love with the ghost, yeah. but it also thinks there might not be a ghost and he's losing his mind. Um, so they're doing that, uh, going off to see the ghost, um, because Greg wants to see a ghost, uh, and meanwhile, Wirt and Beatrice are stealing and they kind of have a moment. Uh, it turns out Beatrice was actually, um, a human, but she threw a rock at a bluebird and got cursed and turned her whole family into bluebirds. <laughs> and she's going to Adelaide so she can get turned back into a human along with her whole family. Mm -hmm. And it turns out at the end it wasn't actually a ghost. It was another eccentric rich person. And their mansions are so big they ended up, like, connecting to each other. <laughs> and, yeah, they uh, end up romantically involved. The horse decides to join them. And now they're on their way to uh, find Adelaide's house. Um, except... <laughs> They do get money, Greg does, and he throws the two pennies he has into the fountain, <laughs> which was the uh, fairy's fair, so. Episode 6, um, oh yeah, also, uh, Greg's been carrying a frog around this whole time. Oh yeah, we can't forget about the frog. Yeah, which I also forgot to mention, that's why I should write these down, but I didn't, so. <laughs> uh, yes, he keeps naming the frog different things, he can't decide on the frog's name anyway, so like it's frog friend yeah the frog does not talk so far so he keeps naming it like Wirt jr and yeah like all kinds of different the names, names of presidents and just different things yeah but anyways they end up on the uh boat which is a river ferry and um it's a frog boat so everybody on the boat's frogs <laughs> and uh they had snuck onto it so the cops are like kind of after them also uh Greg's frog doesn't wear clothes, so maybe that's also why they're after them. <laughs> yeah, they point out that their frog is naked, but the other ones all have clothes on. Yep, so uh, we have a sequence, so they run around and hide and eventually end up with the band. Um, during this, Beatrice is kind of like uh, wistful and sad because she doesn't want to bring them to Adelaide. And, and so she's trying, kind of trying to like sabotage. <laughs> Their uh, yeah, fairy journey. Stall and yeah, yeah. We don't know yet why she doesn't want to bring him to Adelaide. Yeah, and um, so eventually they end up playing with the band to like allay suspicions because they do the old uh, like three person in a trench coat joke. 
<laughs> yeah. Or with disguise. the frog on top. Yeah. And yeah. they the frog can sing and they are they're with the band and they um they end up playing in the band and it all goes well. Uh, and then they like land and the frogs are all mud hibernating. Okay, we need to go to Adelaide's now and uh during the night Beatrice sneaks off to meet with Adelaide and it turns out uh Beatrice had struck a deal with um Adelaide, which was to um bring her a child servant <laughs> in exchange she would give her these magic scissors that would turn her back her and her family back into a human. Uh, and she wants to rescind the deal, uh, because, you know, she kinda gotten to know uh the two kids and didn't want to hurt them. And uh while she's having this conversation, um Wirt and Greg had realized that she wandered off, so they follow her and they come in and realized, oh, she's betrayed us and uh they run off uh all ma- well and Beatrice um ends up killing Adelaide uh by accident and they run off mad or well Greg's not mad. Greg's never mad. <laughs> Greg yeah. never knows what's going on. Except when he does. Uh but Wirt's upset, you know, by this betrayal. Uh seven. So Wirt's all um upset still, but Greg and Wirt Oh yeah, they run into the woodsman again, um <laughs> and they have another encounter and you know, they think he's menacing but it warns them about the beast again and then they come across another cottage uh, which they think is abandoned but it turns out not to be uh it has a um like (laughs) i don't know how to describe what's going on there but there's this like weird old woman and her (laughs) daughter niece maybe not yeah maybe just a random child well she says aunt um aunt whisper um, but then she goes, she's not my real aunt. Yeah. <laughs> um, who's seemingly, like, uh, been, you know, like, controlling her, doesn't want her to leave and stuff. Um, so they make a plan to escape Wirt and, um, whatever her name was. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so they do, but it turns out, like, oh no, like, she was actually going to become wicked because she's possessed by his spirit. And they defeat the spirit and transform, um, like, uh whoever her name is, back to normal. Uh, and she ends up staying with Auntie Whisper, who's like, be careful for my sister Adelaide. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which uh, we know is already dead. Um, and after this, uh, Wirt starts losing hope and falls into despair, which is apparently, like, brings him into the uh, grips of the beast. <laughs> so, um, episode eight. The two brothers are, like, still, like, you know, going on their journey, but, like, Wirt's lost hope, and, uh, Greg's still, you know, his usual chipper self, and, uh, they end up sleeping, where Wirt's, like, totally lost hope, and Greg, like, interprets his, uh, despair as, oh, I'm the leader now, I'll find a way out for us, and he says he's gonna, uh, come up with a plan in his dreams, which he does, and there's this long dream sequence where there's a song playing, and (laughs) eventually, um, Greg gets visited by some weird angel thing in the dream that will grant him a wish. Uh, initially, he wants to wish for his way back home, but uh, he can't do that because um, it's only him, and um, Wirt has fallen into despair, so he can't go home. Uh, so he's like, oh, well, I will uh, wish to take Wirt's place, um, and I will go with the beast instead. So um, he does that, and... Um, Wirt awakens and realizes Greg is gone, so he, uh, chases, like, tries to find Greg, and nearly drowns in a frozen river, where he's rescued at the end. Um, and then, episode 9, where we have the flashback, where, um, we realize what happened. It's Halloween, or around Halloween, and Wirt wants to impress this girl, so he makes her a tape, uh, that says, For Sarah. Um, and he's going, she's, uh, like, mascot at the football game, and he's, like, sitting out there, like, can't work up the confidence to, um, like, tell her, and his brother shows up, you know, Greg shows up, and he's like, oh, okay, well, I'll just go give it to her. Um, yeah. Because he's a kid and doesn't understand the, like, teenage feelings, you know, <laughs> angst. Yeah, he thinks he's being helpful. Yeah, and he goes up to some other kids who are there who kind of, like, make fun of him. Um, and he plays it off and he's like, uh, they're gonna be a party later where apparently, what was his name? Jason Funderburger, that was it. Yeah, Funderburger. Yeah, um, 
and is apparently going to ask her out, and he's all upset. It's like, oh, yeah. Jason Funderverker is going to get to date uh, the girl he's interested in. And so he's like all upset. He wanders off, but then Craig's like, well, maybe you should go talk to her. Uh, and um, so the basic plot of the, I'm, I don't remember the specifics, but the basic thing is, is like he's being an angsty teenager who's awkward and doesn't know how to talk to people. And Greg's always like pushing him to uh, go in and like, you know, actually do the thing because he's a, a kid and doesn't understand it. Um, they end up with the tape, um, some other kids, and so he's like chasing after the tape to get it back because apparently he thinks it's embarrassing. <laughs> um, they end up going to a party and then later to a graveyard where like uh, Wirt can't work up the courage to show up, but Greg does. And then like eventually the cops show up and they all like scatter and uh, go over the garden wall. <laughs> All the cops are there. Um, so then they, like, fumble off over the garden wall and uh, end up in the unknown. And that's, like, how they end up where they were uh, during their adventure. And then um, at the end, uh, Wirt wakes up in the um, Bluebird, with the Bluebird family. And, uh, oh, and he has the frog. I don't know if that's important or not, but he has the frog. And then he goes <laughs> off to... um rescue the uh because beatrice did saved him i'm all over the place with this wow <laughs> and he goes off to look for uh greg in a snowstorm mm -hmm. and then episode 10 uh beatrice is looking for greg at the same time as uh wart's looking for greg and then you know he's having to do tasks for the beast greg is and eventually they do end up meeting beatrice and uh wart end up meeting uh, like, in their pursuit of Greg, and they do find Greg, who's, like, under the, um, like, grasp of the beast, uh, and the woodsman's also there, and, uh, there's a whole thing where the beast tries to, like, uh, you know, pull one over on Greg's, like, uh, take over the woodsman's duties, and, um, like, keep the lantern lit. Uh, it turns out that the, uh, trees he's been cutting down are, um, like, lost souls, um, in this woods, that the beast, like, if someone gets lost here, it falls into despair, they turn into trees, and the woodsman has been acting as, um, like, I guess his reaper, yeah. um, burning the, tr converting the trees into oil to light the lantern, um, which, you know, from earlier, the beast is the original lantern keeper, and he's tricked him into doing this to, uh, because he thinks his daughter's soul is in the flame. Mm -hmm. You know, very folkloric sort of deal there. But, um, Wirt realizes, oh no, actually, uh, this is not, um, like, this is nonsense, I'm, the flame is for your benefit, uh, not, won't save my brother, so they decide, um, to, uh, not follow the beast, and the woodsman ends up blowing out the, uh, lantern, and destroying the beast, presumably, um, Wirt and Greg wander off, and, you know, Wirt apologizes to Greg, etc., etc. Um, Wirt kept the scissors that would turn the birds back into humans and gives them to Beatrice. Beatrice returns to her family. Wirt and Greg end up finding the path back home. And, you know, then we get our sort of epilogue where um, they wake up and are taken to the hospital because they've been, like, uh, they wake up, like, having almost drowned or something. Um, so, Sarah likes Wirt, clearly, mm -hmm. and they, like, have a moment, um, and Wirt's just too in his own head to realize that, uh, and <laughs> Jason Funderburger sucks. Yeah. That's also, like, a whole thing with this whole, like, sort of plot. Um, and so, you know, happy ending for them. Oh, also, uh, Greg, um, had stolen a rock from his neighbor's yard. Yeah. And, like, I have to return the rock. It was wrong of me to steal. <laughs> Like a bastion of goodness wherever he goes. And, uh, yeah, and then we have an epilogue where we see all the characters we met along the way, uh, like, and what happened with them. Yeah. Like, uh, Beatrice gets turned back into a human, too. Yeah, and then her family's sitting around the end making jokes about, what are you gonna do, turn us back into birds? Yeah, yeah. And the end. The end. Yeah. So I think it's, um,. I think it's noteworthy that there's some kind of high uh high profile um what am i trying to say there's actors. some high profile voice actors in yes. this yes 
Uh, we have like Tim Curry, Christopher Lloyd, Elijah Woods. Uh, what's the lady's name? Melanie Linsky. Like there's there's definitely like a few people in here that are like, you know, kind of um, more well-known actors. And so um, immediately, like we started watching it and I was like, is that Christopher Lloyd? And like, sure <laughs> enough, it was. Yeah. Um, he has such a distinct voice, you know, so. Anyway, so I thought it was, um, I thought it was good, and like I said, it kind of got a little disengaged toward, like, the end, but then I thought the last episode was, like, summed it up pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I actually think that, um, you know, it's a cute little, like you said, folkloric, you know, story that kind of goes through these, like, different fantasy land kind of scenarios and um it's just it's funny i mean obviously greg is like the funniest character and what is that thing that he says where he's like he says it a couple times he's at the end or like during you know some poignant moment and he's like ain't that how it is or something yeah. like that like what does he say i don't I think even that's remember it. i don't remember the specifics. yeah it's like one of those kind of like funny little like uh, what you gonna do? Kind of sayings. Yeah. Um, and he he's always there for like comedic relief. So I think he was definitely my favorite character. And I think like, you know, the the different tropes that are in each episode, you know, kind of cliched stuff. You know, you have like the the old chase scene with the frog police and they yeah. come out in the three person trench coat playing mm -hmm. in the band, like trying to disguise themselves and it ends up not working and you know like that kind of thing um but it's like a cute little halloween themed but not scary show um yeah. i think it's really cute i can see why it like lands on all of the you know autumn themed bucket list you know yes, things to yes. watch in autumn so it's definitely cute and there's so many different little elements here like the frog like that Greg is always renaming. Right, yeah. Um, as kind of like a supporting character there. <laughs> like, just, you know, the animals that talk and the animal school and just like really fantastical things that are just like, oh, okay, well, we're here now. You know, like considered normal in this, I guess. Um, so, yeah, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I love the, like, vignettes, um, you know, like, each episode's a new, like, location for them to come across some wacky things, and it's, like, sort of weaving an overarching plot throughout it, and, you know, like, at the beginning, those are really strong. Like, uh, those first two episodes are really, really good, uh, like, I really liked the, uh, like, the creepy town yeah. with all the pumpkin people. Yeah. Like, that was really cool. Um, and I, I like the, like, sort of bit they do here where, um, you know, they always, um, undercut the uh tension for the sake of comedy like they show up in all these different sort of like creepy scenarios and almost every time it's like revealed to be like oh it's fine you know yeah uh, that's like a cool little adventure story thing for this like specific uh like animated kids show yeah um you know because they they go to the creepy town and it turns out to be fine and they go to the creepy schoolyard and it turns out to be fine and they go to the creepy mansion and like the um, right. creepy tavern and yeah yeah um yeah and there's some really good jokes especially in the beginning like uh my favorite joke in the series is that like episode two where they're wandering off and like uh beatrice is kind of getting fed up with greg's constant cheeriness and yeah um, so she's like why can't you be more like your brother <laughs> and she's like you know he just does whatever you tell him to do yeah and like yeah. that whole bit where he's <laughs> like he kind of takes offense to that, but then he just does whatever she tells him. Yeah, he's he's he kind of does it, like, stubbornly. Like, oh, no, I have to sit here. I can't do it. Right, him. yeah, and how that pays off. But then um, the bit where he's like, I don't want to do that. That's not fun. And she's like, life's horrible. It's not fun. Yeah, <laughs> and they're, like, totally making me. fun of work. Yeah, that was funny. And also, my second favorite joke was when they're in the mansion and... Beatrice is like, we gotta rob this guy to get the fairy money, and Wirt's like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> and it's like, well, the horse wants to, and he's like, he's a talking horse, he's his own person, he can do what he wants, and then he's like, I want to steal. Yeah, the horse wants to steal. Which like, was oh like, just the, the timing of that was gold. <laughs> it was funny, that was very funny. Um, I think 
Yeah, the the second episode I think was my favorite one. Yeah. With the the um pumpkin people. Well, skeletons with pumpkins yes. on them. Um but that was like a very like, you know, moody kind of like Halloween, you know, type mm-hmm. of thing, which, you know, I always like. And then and then it had like that creepiness and then it was like Oh, we're not going to kill you. You just have to do, you know, hard labor. And then they think they're going to die again and they don't, you know, like all this stuff. So I think that's kind of like, it's kind of funny. And it's supposed to be like these spooky, like skeletons with pumpkin heads and bodies, but they're just like not really creepy at all, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's, it's definitely like a seasonal, like, you know, I could see watching this like each year around Halloween, like as one of those one of those things that you know just kind of puts you in the autumn mood. So yeah. I think that I think that that episode was my favorite, and then probably like second favorite. I don't know. I kind of like the last episode how it all just like wrapped up. You know, I think that would you know we see Beatrice like lift the curse on her family with the like magic scissors by clipping their wings and. So, you know, all's well that ends well kind of thing for Beatrice. And, yep. like, yeah, I just think, like, the, the last one just kind of ties it all in a nice little bow. But, yeah, for sure, like, my favorite part of the whole series was, like, the comedy aspect of it. Where, um, and it's usually, like, Greg or, like, Beatrice, like, saying something, you know, just comedic timing, like yeah, you said. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was definitely entertaining. You know, like, sometimes when you watch an animated series you're kind of like uh i don't know if this is gonna be like too childish for me or i'm just not gonna like it you know like sometimes they're just like over the top goofy but i think like you know it was um the comedy of it like made it like entertaining still you know what i mean that it wasn't just like a little kid's story yeah well i mean this is definitely parsable for adults because at its core it's a coming of age story for work right yeah which, yeah, which is actually part of my problem with it. But before I get into that, I do want to say I also like the um, overarching beast and woodsman story mm-hmm. that's like in the background. That's like a really cool folkloric thing. Like, you know, of him getting tricked by some like just strange and horrible monster that like yeah. is, lives out in the woods. And he has to like continuously do this task. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't mention, but one of the ways it pays off is the woodsman does end up meeting his daughter again oh yeah at the end so i will say i don't like how that pays off which uh now gets into my criticisms unless you have anything else you want to add no go ahead so what why don't you like that okay well it just goes too fast um like like i said in the back half there's a lot of just like rushed plot ones like uh the whole adelaide thing takes place and resolves entirely within the end of episode like the uh, frog episode Mm -hmm. like this really should have had more space to bloom or to like to go because um you know this is like the for the first half of the show this is basically like their overarching plot is like to get to adelaide that's the destination for them to like end it so quickly i feel like is uh was a mistake um Episode 8 with the dream sequence, that dream sequence takes way too long, and I didn't like it at all. That was long, yeah. That's kind of where I was, like, starting to, like, "Mm, okay, let's move on. And then at the end, like, um, I feel like they didn't give enough space for, uh, the ending, where Wart defeats the beast. Like, that really could have used more time, because he just kind of, like, you know, he's tempted by the offer, but, like, and then he's just like, nope. I'm not going to do it. And he just, like, sees through it transparently. I felt like that could have had more build-up for it to have been satisfying. Especially when, like, that's, like, this is the other overarching, like, plot beat for, um, like, part of it. Or, well, not the other, but one of the others is the woodsman story. And for that to just resolve so quickly is, I, I don't like it. <laughs> that didn't bother me as much. Yeah, I thought that was okay. I was just like, you know, I think that's kind of part of the... Uh, I, I don't want to say comedy, but like it's part of the like you know mood of the show where they're like this overarching theme. And then they're like, oh, that's done, you know. Yeah, well, I I think they could have handled it better. I think that should have gotten more time. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. So the other thing I don't like is that this is like the like main story, the main character arc for Wirt, who's our protagonist, is um 
just really generic. Um, like his two like arcs are, you know, the most generic like a uh, older kid with a younger like younger sibling story, mm-hmm. um, which I would be more okay with, I guess, if it wasn't like um, I don't know. Like he's just a jerk, and <laughs> um, Greg is just like a like you know <laughs> pure bastion of goodness. Like he is like always doing the right thing, always like. Uh, like, always understands things when he does like, it's just, I don't know, I think they went a bit too over the top with it, and the other story being, like, the quintessential, uh, nerd boy story, where he's, like, um, trying to get with a girl he likes, um, and he's too awkward and, like, thinks everybody doesn't like him to, like, you know, he's anxious about it to to do anything about it, and it's just, like, this is the most basic story you could have told here, and... I don't like that kind of story anyways. It's boring and... Oh, uh, that doesn't bother me. I, I thought it was cute. Like, it, you know, it is quintessential, but, like, you know, so much storytelling is. So it didn't bother me. It was just kind of like, oh, okay, we see, like, kind of what his character is. And um, I didn't think Wirt was completely a jerk. I thought he was. I mean, he has no, depth to him. No, I mean, he him, cared but... about his brother. Yeah. yeah, he cared about his brother, and he was, um, you know, trying to, you know, find him, and he was trying to do the right thing by kind of, like, leading the way, and, and you know, so I, I didn't think he was a jerk. Like, I mean, he had that jerky, like, older brother. Yeah. You know, I think that's, like, a normal, you know, I remember when I was little, my older brother being, like, jerky to us, you know what I mean? Like... It was kind of like a normal thing, but I think like, you know, you see that we're like deep down, he, he really does care. Yeah. I mean, that's the yeah. point. I just felt like they laid it on a bit too thick with like, um, in the flashback episode where I feel like he's just, guys, this dude kind of sucks. <laughs> uh, I thought it was cute because I, like, I kind of felt like they did that because Greg is the one that, like, kind of pushes him to do things, you yeah, know, like, yeah. in his innocence. And so, like, I thought that was why they did that with Wirt, you know, oh, to show, yeah, like, yeah, Greg's, no. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, that didn't bother me. I get that. I just, I thought they laid it on too thick. Oh, uh, I it didn't bother me at all. Like, I, I think that, you know, with that few episodes, um you probably don't have like you're saying some of the stuff is kind of rushed you probably don't have a lot of room to like make him a really complex character you know well i i don't think the problem is that um he's not complex enough like i get like structurally this all works i just don't like it you don't like it yeah (laughs) i thought he was too much of a jerk um like greg was too like good and pure and I didn't like the stories. See, I didn't think Greg was too good and pure because he's also like a Dennis the Menace where he's like always getting into stuff and he's like stealing rocks yeah, but and not stealing maliciously. money. And, like, he's just like... Not maliciously, but like he's like a fun-loving like goofball. Like so I didn't... I didn't find him to be, like, too pure because he had that, like, mischievous, like, element to him. I don't even think, like, I think mischief, like, requires intent. He's just, like, naive. Uh, I mean, he's, like, always, like, looking for some kind of adventure and, like, he's like, no, I'm gonna do what I want to do kind of thing. So I feel like some of it is intent. No, no, he just wants to have fun. Well, and he's yeah, just, but- like bumbles his way through like i i don't think there's anything like bad about him like the roughest edge he has is that he's kind of annoying if you're a teenager yeah hmm also the whole thing with like (laughs) weren't not liking his stepdad (laughs) or the stepdad yeah that was a funny that was a funny added thing where he's like he said something about um greg's dad because they're half brothers and he's like he said something about him, like, trying to make him join the band. And Greg, like, explains, like, yeah, but if you join the band, you could be closer to... What's her name? Sarah. Is it Sarah? Yep. Yeah. So, that was a funny little part where he's like, ugh. You know, such an angsty teenager. Yeah, he is, definitely. Yeah, I didn't realize he was, like, a teenager until he's like, I mean, I'm, like, in high school. Yeah. <laughs> At yeah. some point. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's older. Oh, he's, ex- like, extremely an angsty. <laughs> no, he, <Yeah>. like, <laughs> gets poetic at points. I thought he was, it's like, a funny. middle schooler or something, and he's like, I'm a teenager in high school. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I just, uh, 
Yeah, those plot lines were a bit too generic and a bit too, like, they could have had more edge to them, I suppose. Yeah. Well, I think it works in a variety of situations, though. I mean, it's definitely, like, you know, a trope, but I think for this one, um, because I think nerd boys are kind of endearing, so I think it's, I think it's, I thought it was really cute, the relationship of the brothers, that one's kind of, like, nerdy and one's this, like, fun social guy. Yeah, yeah. They, like, they, like, you know, push each other in different ways and, like, compliment each other well. I didn't think about that from like a romantic point of view, but more of the like uh, the brother's relationship. Yeah, which no, was they're, cute to me. Yeah, they're, they're like well realized characters. It's just, you know. Yeah. But so this whole series, um, unbeknownst to me, like basically has like a cult following, yeah. which I I had heard of it. Like I now that I'm thinking about it, like I heard of it probably like in the last year or so online only you know like i've never heard anybody talking about it but i've seen it like mentioned online but i again i had no idea like i thought it was like a movie because it appears on these lists like oh watch um twilight watch over the garden wall and you know like so i thought it was a movie not like an animated series that was on cartoon network so um anyway and i i thought i don't know with that kind of name i don't know why i thought it was going to be creepy I mean, it could have been, you know? <laughs> it could have been, yeah. So, um, but I like that it was, like, creepy, but, like, in a cute way, you know? Yeah, and it goes for comedy, and it tries to be fun the whole time through. Yeah, like, whimsical. Like, mm -hmm. it's just one of those, like, fun little things that you watch, you know, like, every year during Christmas, I watch, like, some kind of whimsical, like, Christmas movie. <laughs> you know, usually on Halloween, I watch, like, some kind of, you know, scary movie that's not too, too scary. <laughs> yeah, so you might have to add this to your rotation. Yeah, I was like, it's going to be in my autumn, my autumn playlist. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, anything else to add about this? No, I think that's it. I I'm glad we watched it. I think it was a good suggestion and um, a great, you know, thing to add to our, our Halloween vibes this month. Yeah, despite my, um criticisms i do agree i'm glad we watched it yeah so i guess well, uh, take us out yeah that's it this has been beach view thank you for listening join us next time bye bye